we don't understand very well and who think and are sentient and are here. I think, you know, they demand our attention just as much as hypothetical aliens that may exist elsewhere because, you know, if you play it through, okay, so we get to hypothetically, you know, to a, a planet around another star, we meet the technological intelligence or its robot successors <laughs> that sent the message to us. And that's only part of the equation. We would also be fascinated to learn all about their, all their ecosystems, about all the other species that live there on that, on, on that world. And it's starting to feel like, to me, like we would be a little bit more <laughs> interested in their world than in our own. Um, there's still so much to, to learn here and still so much to look after here. So so um, that, for me, is, at this stage, more important. So, for example, what's the role of human values in this? Why would people actually give up their lives on Earth to go do a spacecraft and uh, go on a potentially uh, perilous mission to an exoplanet with the very high likelihood that, you know, unless there was... Um, technological advances that I can't even imagine, um, they probably would never see the outcome. That's Phil Searles speculating on the motivation to leave Earth behind. Would that be altruistic or would there be some other kinds of issues? Maybe these these would be people who are um, scientists and so maybe that's something where they have, they get a, a deep sense of meaning if they do this um, so that's one, one thing, you know, the human values. Aliris Allman suggests that anyone undertaking this mission would need some pretty substantial emotional training. How vulnerable would you need to be to withstand this type of journey? Producer Kate Ladenheim joins me to discuss. I'm struck by the extent of that training because it's really not something that we are encouraged to do culturally, at least uh, here in America. Um, there's definitely a lot of like uh, like a buck up sort of <laughs> sort of well, pressure. Exactly. Well, um, and, and I think that is the challenge that, you know, as someone who studies psychology, I know it's normal for people to freak out. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you're going to freak out. I'm going to tell you you're going to freak out. <laughs> and you're going to freak out. And just give me your hand. I'm going to take you through this. Mm -hmm. And then they're fine. But there's always that initial denial. There is, you know, buck up, handle it, mm -hmm. manage it. But you can only do that for so long. And the longer the journey, you have to find a way to make it okay and to, and I think once a, an individual and a group make it through that first crisis, they're gonna feel better. It's like, okay, we made it through this. We can make it through the next one. This is where we get into a lot of speculation. You know, can AI be your counselor? Social intelligence, is that something where you can just do that? But still that human interaction, that one-on-one, -on -one, if you get in a fight with someone or just a small argument, you want, those people to be able to handle that argument in an effective manner so it doesn't fester and blow up later because you didn't address everything. It is going to take a lot of training. We're not good at it now, but, <laughs> you know, we can, we can learn and we can adapt. And when survival is at stake, people come together in amazing ways. Mm -hmm. I always kind of tease people, you know, you're one broken heart away from a disaster, the engineers would say we're, we're one something away from the ship falling apart or, you know, this person is one sneeze away from a heart attack or whatever. Same thing with psychology and, and the mind. We're one broken heart or one argument away from a disaster because you don't know at what point people are making their boiling point or hitting their boiling point. So you have to be prepared for that. What are the kinds of practices that individuals and and groups can put into place when you're you're on a mission and you know that you're trying to keep that in connect stay connected to that inspiration or like to that purpose you know how do you continually like presence that that thing that you once cared about so much but now it's year 12 and you're really sick of Fred next door and space is still black and, <laughs> right. and right. Um, nothing's going to change. You know what? And in that person's lifetime, nothing may change, but what they're doing is a stepping stone to something greater. Mm -hmm. So I think you really are going to have to keep that mission top 
top of mind and share the story. It's really about, it's, it's about storytelling and internalizing the purposefulness of your work, understanding what that work means and who finds that work important. It's obviously you and your crewmates and the people that are with you, but it's also communicating and getting support from those who aren't there as long as you can. So would you go? We asked Ray Adams, as someone thinking about commercial spaceflight in the near future, would you consider relocating off Earth? In Chile, where where you know I am right now, um, there are some regions up north in the desert uh, where they actually test uh, a lot of the Mars rovers. It just happens to be an area that's very similar um, in the composition of the dirt and the level of dryness and the wind and everything else. And I had a similar thought too while I was I was up there visiting and standing there, and I was like, I don't know if I would want this for the rest of my life, right? If it was a one-way ticket, is do I really want to be in such a dry location in a space suit and in a very small environment? And, you know, part of you is like, well, no, I wouldn't be very comfortable, but um, certainly the chance of something like that is is just too great to pass up. Um, especially, you know, we're, I'm personally I just hooked on this concept of exploration and of course want to go to space at some point. Um, a distance that far, I haven't really thought of. Catherine Denning spoke with us about this idea of leaving Earth permanently and whether or not we are programmed to say goodbye to our homes. If we're talking about leaving Earth and never coming back, that plays into kind of two big stories of our age. One is the story of displacement. There are more people on this Earth displaced than ever before, and it's partly just a function of global population, but also just what's happening in the world. It's extraordinary how many people have had to make the choice to leave the only home they've ever known and move on. And I think that creates a certain psychology in the world where it becomes that much more thinkable to just leave on a bigger scale. And I think it also plays into the notion of escape. Um, there's enough wrong in the world today, uh, enough really big stuff that nobody can see easily how to fix, that there is, I think, a real impulse to get off this rock um, and go and try for, quote unquote, an Earth 2.0, which is phrasing that I personally have a big problem with because I think it erodes our commitment to this Earth. But I can understand both the multiplanetary mandate, the idea that we need to distribute humanity's presence throughout the, the galaxy, one little bit at a time, obviously, starting with the solar system and then going beyond. So I can understand that. Um, but at the same time, I think there's something very troubling there. Because I think many people, if they had a choice, they would choose not to be displaced. And if they had a choice, they would choose not to have to escape. Um, and yet that is where so many of us find ourselves, in those kinds of situations, where there is not much here that we have a deep commitment to that we can't maintain in our hearts and minds while we went on a much larger journey. So in the initial stages of an interstellar voyage, you'd have some degree of communication. Um, and then, of course, it would it would just stop, and you would have to say goodbye to all of your loved ones, just as you eventually do when they die anyway. Um, but in terms of the whole world that you're leaving behind, I think that's something that people are perhaps more ready to do than they've ever done, than, than, than we've ever been before. For. And that, to me, is actually one of the tragedies of our of our age, that displacement has reached such uh, epic proportions that we can think of leaving this planet, which is, for all its flaws, still such a beautiful world, that we can think quite cheerfully about leaving it behind and going into the void <laughs> to a destination that you might never reach um, to encounter a species that might not be nice. Um, like, that's a... You know, that's really saying something about how eroded our attachment to this place, to this reality, to this here and now has become. So to me, that's kind of the underside to this story. Every time we disconnect from a place, it has a profound effect on us. Now, only 5% of the world is indigenous. This small percentage of people are the only ones that are still living on the parts of our planet tied to their ancestral origins. 95% of the world's population has a shared history of displacement. And beyond that, moving around is a big part of our lives. Did you go away for school? Move for a job? Are you a refugee fleeing conflict and trying to provide a new life for your children out of harm's way? Our human story is so defined by disconnecting from a place. Are we, in some sense, programmed to leave our homes behind? Would you decide to go? 
Let us know online at luxtaterra.com and on Twitter and Facebook at Luxtaterra. This has been Transmission Podcast, hosted by Cecilia Lynn Jacobs and produced by Ian Garrett and Kate Leidenheim. With special thanks to today's guests, Pippa Goldschmitz, Beth Diller, Dr. Duncan Forgan, Catherine Denning, Phil Thrills, Joel Myers, Ray Adams, Alirith Allman. Original composition and sound editing by Miles Avery. Transmission is a podcast and performance series speculating on what might happen if we began to receive the popular broadcasts of intelligent alien life and follows two sisters selected to lead an interstellar mission to make first contact. Learn more about our team and upcoming performances at luxeterra.com and find us on Facebook and Twitter at Luxeterra. That's L-U-X-T-A-T-E-R-R-A. Transmission is a production of Toaster Lab in Canada and is a fiscally sponsored project of Fractured Atlas in the United States.